Yeah. So during last session, we learned about servlets for the web application development. The main key for the web application development is servlet. Without servlet, we can't imagine uh, web applications. So to make it very simple, in Spring MVC, Spring MVC offered one dispatcher servlet, and we understand about it how dispatcher servlet will help us during request forwarding and while sending response. We learn how it will help us. And before that, we have covered basic core module to understand how annotations will work, how IOC will work, how dependency injection will work. So all together, we, we covered the JDBC and ORM also. All together, when we add them together, right? MVC with the IOC, JDBC or ORM, we can able to deliver end-to-end -end application, end-to-end -end web application we can deliver. So far with the content which we learned, you can able to deliver end-to-end -end application. Undoubtedly, you can implement end-to-end. -end. So few left, which are security, AOP, right, transactions that we will see going forward. But to cover as a developer, to cover basic application development, to handle all the CRUD operations, basically we will have requirements, right? 99% of the time we do CRUD operations. We fetch data, we do some manipulations, then we use to update the data or insert the data or delete the data. So you need to have more focus on this area first. Every business have different set of requirements, but mostly will have CRUD requirements. Save, update, to delete. So you need to do more practice on this operation. Save, update, delete, select, select all. Implement same use case for multiple tables. Take one employee table, do employee CRUD operation. Student table, student CRUD operation. Some courses table, courses of CRUD operation. Products, products of CRUD operation. So that you will get full hands on on these CRUD operations. In last session, I don't think I shared this one. But yeah. I don't know how many of you are able to um, implement it yourself. But today, once again, I'll check it and share. Now, we want to go one more step ahead and we will see how to use Spring Boot here. We'll start with Spring Boot. Basically, Spring is a raw Spring is a raw form of Spring framework is a raw form of IOC framework, whereas Spring Boot is more advanced one. Spring framework IOC raw form framework. There you need to develop each and everything using IOC. You need to implement everything. In Spring framework, developer must aware of developer must aware of configurations. If we see the MVC application so far that we have done, we did a lot of configurations. Web.xml file, for example. Developer must do all the configurations carefully. Developer doing configurations always. Example, just give me a minute, I'll close my door. So, 
yeah tell me if you see any other observations okay i'll be noting it web.xml file one configuration that we are doing dispatch a sublet go on mute okay na? if you are not talking so example web.xml file configuration we have done and lot of spring.xml configurations we see beans configurations or if not beans we used to do uh, you know uh, mvc configurations we did mvc configurations or context colon config configurations we did uh, did right context column component scan all such we are doing in spring xml file and any other configurations developer is doing connection pool kind of configurations that you are doing using at the rate configuration annotation correct configuration connection pooling and jdbc template hibernate templates session factories lot of configurations that we are doing using at the rate configuration annotation using this at the rate configuration also we did lot of configuration so far if you remember so all this need to be handled by developer all this need to be handled by developer as a developer you must aware of all these configurations part and you should build your application you should be building your application so this is from configurations front up we can see developer doing lot of configurations in spring framework and again it's to spring boot if i come there uh, runtime setup we are doing lot of runtime setup i don't want to go with the traditional comparisons okay i don't want to go with the traditional comparisons that we have in google what i realized i am putting it here okay so you can read through it later if you want <coughs> so runtime setup usually when we implement a spring based application uh, imagine web application that we have done we did tomcat setup we did tomcat setup tomcat server tomcat server we have configured and uh, dependencies dependency management little careful on dependencies developer should be carefully he need to add all the dependencies which are allowed careful over the dependencies he need to pull all the dependencies which means compatible actually when we add some version of the spring framework compatible all compatible dependencies only we will be adding it sometimes we used to get errors like the class version is not compatible with the current running environment such issues we will see because maybe your java runtime environment is very lower version spring may be higher version when your application is having hundreds of dependencies carefully you need to pick the dependency which is suitable to your application runtime so over the dependencies you should you should take care of them all the compatible libraries only you will be adding into maven and runtime compatibilities we have yeah and what else development time so we need to spend lot of development time here lot of development time for implementing daos service classes controllers
so a lot of time we will spend on implementing this DAO services controllers and all if I observe more deployment support no much deployment support I'll tell you what is it so deployment support means we can implement the application after the implementation when you want to deliver your application when you want to deliver your application you need to do a lot of manual uh, you know uh, setup changes and all during deployment maybe which is running in your local may not work in higher environment right so dev code you may not able to move to production directly dev code may not able to move production directly right so you need to do a few changes in your code before moving it to production and you will be deploying it and no application monitoring support once you deploy the application if you want to monitor it physically you need to visit the server you need to read through the logs and you should understand what's happening in your application is your application still running or down or you need to use some third party applications to monitor your application so no application monitoring after after deployment this is going to be happen apart from that spring framework also good framework is strong spring boot also built on top of spring framework only so whatever the problems they identified here they shorted out that they thought it in a different way and given more developer friendly deployment friendly configuration friendly framework they made it very simple anybody can code in spring boot usually the problem is here you learned about IOC after IOC you, you felt somewhere confident somewhat confident on connection pools JDBC Hibernate session factory and when it comes to spring MVC you see there are some configurations so you might see little bit configuration learning curve is there that I need to learn all the configurations how to do so you you may not able to remember all uh, such configurations all the times or during development you need to spend guys if you are not speaking go on mute uh, let me put you yeah so during development always for each and every application let's say rapidly you need to implement application you have 10 applications need to be implemented in queue every time you are doing repeatedly same work same web xml configuration same mvc configurations or connection pool configurations all that stuff you are spending a lot of time and these configurations need to be done very carefully and all the runtime setup like tomcat that you need to be uh, installed in each and every machine along with your java java is mandatory anyway for spring or spring boot so additionally tomcat you need to install in your servers or in your local to test it at least your application how it is working so while adding dependencies it will create lot of trouble it will say your spring framework is okay but hibernate is not supporting or your spring framework is okay not supporting the log framework lot of discrepancies we see while adding maven dependencies so we will google it and we will identify it which is the compatible version for if it is a spring 3x what is the compatible uh, 
uh, version of Hibernate for 3x, or what is the compatible version of JPA for Spring, or what is the compatible framework for you know other integrations. And a lot of time you need to spend, especially right, a lot of time we, we did not spend on controller service part. We will spend, we will spend here almost, right, two by third time or uh, half the, half of the application time. Half of the application time we will spend on implementing DAOs. Then remaining half we will spend on implementing services and controllers. So here we will spend a lot of time to write the queries. So that is very sensitive part, DAO part is. You need to write queries. If it is a hibernate, it's okay. You will be having all the CRUD operation methods in hand so that you can use them. But if you are going to write some custom queries, most of the applications, right, in real time, we will be having a lot of custom queries. A lot of joins we need to apply, a lot of filters we need to apply, a lot of shorting techniques we need to apply. So if you have such custom queries, then you need to write a lot of SQLs queries there. And always repeatedly we will be implementing same CRUD operation methods save update delete save update delete select select all save update delete select select all but you will be spending again good amount of time there during your implementation if you can able to save this time if application estimated for 10 days that you can able to deliver it in five days but no solution there you need to write though it is a repeated job you need to write and no much deployment support when you want to move your code from development to next environments. There is no easy plug and play configuration. All configurations are a little tightly coupled. So you will be doing some changes before production. And to monitor your application, there is no much support. Maybe you will be depending on some third party applications. But if I choose Spring Boot here, if I choose Spring Boot here, So if I go with Spring Boot, <clears throat> so first thing about configurations, we were thinking a lot of configurations that we are doing here. Okay, we got a smiley here. Okay. So for this configurations right they given a solution here they given solution here in spring boot they have given a lot of predefined at the rate configuration classes there are a lot of at the rate predefined configuration classes a lot of predefined configurations a lot of predefined configurations they have here lot of predefined configurations they have given with a simple property setup. Let's say if you want to create connection pool, you need not to really 
worry about the connection pool implementation. Default connection pool they have given. So they given what are all default configurations? Default connection pools. If you add JDBC, it will it will understand your requirement. Just if you add JDBC in Spring Boot, it will understand. Okay, he definitely need a connection pool. I was saying right, mandatory use the connection pool so that it will improve the application performance. Then what they thought is why we should force the developer to do that. If that is a default one, let's configure it. If they find JDBC dependency itself in your application, then Spring Boot will start creating connection pool for you. So in each and every Spring Boot module, they give a lot of predefined configurations. And if you add MVC dependency, if you add MVC dependency, they will provide default servlet configuration. Default dispatcher servlet, it will be configured and given. So you need not to configure it. You need not to bother about web.xml file. Dispatcher servlet. And if you want to use Hibernate or JPA here. Just if you add few properties, it will create by default entity manager factory for you. Entity manager it will create like your session factory. So a lot of configurations. So developer need not to spe spend much time here. Developer will have very less configurations because lot of configurations are predefined. So as a developer, you need not to tension about configuration. Though you are a fresher also, you can start implementing the application. You need not to wait for the skeleton from your senior. Usually in spring or in spring days, what we used to do, of course, since the beginning I started, you know, doing end to end application designing. So I don't have much worry on the configuration part, but I used to face a lot of issues while doing configurations. And when I try to assign stories to my juniors or core team members i used to design a skeleton with the basic uh, you know data uh, dispatcher servlet configuration connection pool configurations that all skeleton i used to design and i used to test my skeleton if that is working then that code base i used to share it with the, all the developers but here in spring boot you need not to give any skeleton Everyone can start working on requirements. No waiting time. Need not to wait for skill time. You need not to wait. If you are junior, also you can. Start working on it. That much simple here it is. So you need not to wait for any skeleton. You can start working on it. And runtime setup. If you have Java in server, maybe it can be your Linux or Windows. That is sufficient. Having Java in your mission is sufficient in your development mission also. In server or develop mission, in your developer mission also, if you have Java, that is enough for application development.
having simple java is sufficient you need not to have tomcat the reason they have given here embedded tomcat the reason is spring boot is having embedded tomcat so they given tomcat in your jar files itself tomcat jar file they given so you need not to download a special software that we have worried right many might not have done mvc practice i believe very few of you executed it because you might have troubled with the tomcat configuration which version need to be used i know you must have faced that difficulty but in spring boot you need not to worry about it they give an embedded tomcat along with your spring dependencies tomcat will be coming to you so you need not to worry about a runtime servers and dependencies right if if i ask you to start working on it as i said you need not to have any skeleton why because while creating spring application you may not aware of what are all dependencies you need to add what are all the compatible dependencies we will be having lot of confusion in that part for me especially i used to have lot of confusion i used to google it which is uh, compatible to which version of spring they never mention right if you go to hibernate will hibernate mention it i will work only for spring uh, or till this version i will work till jsf this version there will be some compatible issues we will see version to version changes when we made so you need not to worry about dependencies here dependency management made it they made it easy dependency management is very simple here dependency management is very simple here to make dependency management simple they have provided one online tool support they have given online tool and sts sts ide also online tool support given and stls also provided spring tool suit like your eclipse so using this sts or online tool or maybe in intellij also you might have this support i did not started any project from the scratch from intellij but you can look into that as well i believe they must have so dependency management is very simple here so whichever dependencies you want go to online tool there you add all your dependencies it will create a project skeleton for you the skeleton whatever i mentioned it will be given to you this online tool very important skeleton so that skeleton will be given by online tool you need not to wait for your senior guy to provide it you can generate your skeleton if you know what are all things that you need to cover in your requirement let's say you have requirement to, to do the crud operations using jdbc you can generate skeleton with your mvc if you have dispatcher servlet you can, you will be adding mvc dependency you will you will be adding jdbc dependency to generate this skeleton by using this online tools so it will be easy to do creating a project not a big deal now onwards and a lot of development time that we are spending before for doing configurations and all right so here development time reduced development time reduced more than 50% i believe it will go up to 50 to 60% 
maybe more than that also. 50 to 60 percent of development time is saved. 50 to 60 percent of development time is reduced. If you imagine from the client view, we will be saving a lot of money from the development team. Is that means are we losing our money from client means? No. Always business having lot of requirements. But we are taking long time to develop their requirements and deliver it so that they may not put budget on the next project or next requirements. They also will have budget concerns so they will wait for next financial year. They will calculate how much income they will get. Based on that they will plan for it. So if they have budget 1 million if they, if they go with the spring framework they may able to put that cost on a implementation maybe one or two implementations if they choose a spring boot for the implementation whereas covering one two requirements they may cover same budget for four or five requirements so they can speed up their business speeding up their business will give a lot of revenue to the client getting a lot of revenue to the client will make him to spend again lot of money on other application development. So it is doing lot of cost cutting here from the development time also. A lot of time. Guys let me finish. Let me finish. Don't disturb me. You know I'll be trying to imagine the things and putting the points here. I don't have any note for this. If you guys stop me here, I may miss my flow, okay? So note down all your questions after this discussion put me, okay? Yeah. So from development time, we can, re we can reduce a lot of efforts that will save a lot of time within the given I mean they can plan the onwards timeline whereas covering for two requirements they can cover four requirements when we say 50 to 60 percent not a easy thing if project is having 10 crores budget that may finish in five crores itself lot of savings Particularly, I was saying DAO is eating off of the time, right, for database code. Whereas in Spring Boot, you need not implement a DAO at all. You need not implement any database code. On the fly, it will implement for you. That was a nice move from Spring Boot. Who thought about it, we don't know, but they made it simple DAO implementation. A lot of other things we will have, but I observed that from DAOs, a lot of time it is saved. Not only DAOs, your MVC setup also, configuration setup also, configuration setup. Everything saved us a lot of time here. And when you want to move your application from one environment to another environment, a lot of configurations, shufflings that all you need to do particularly for deployment. But here Spring Boot given profiles concept. Profiles concept. So during deployment, if you activate your dev profiles, dev code only will execute. During deployment, if you use SIT testing environment profile activate, then SIT environment properties only it will use. So when you want to shift your application from one environment to another environment, 
no code changes are really required you can implement application in such a way in my current project also i'll be giving an example we have dev developers but they don't aware of all these concepts i didn't teach them use this that i didn't teach them from the beginning because they are as a team i should do that but they choose a different thought process to implement it i was keep quiet and doing my things and waiting for that day for the production then i put a question to them they are implementing code for imagine 10 countries 10 countries code they are put, implementing and they want to deploy each country code specially in one server so 10 countries code we have each country each country will be deployed into one separate server one country code should be deployed into one server i put a question to them 10 countries code are implementing from one code base only 10 countries code which means maybe thousand classes and they are putting each country code into one server i mean 10 countries code they will put but during running they will run only one country code just by giving input if else conditions they will navigate to you know right we can have a lot of if else or switch conditions lot of code we have but from the main code or main input for each country we will give a specific input so that country code only it will execute when i put a question like this when you run one country code is it running all countries code in the ram or only one country code is it creating objects for all countries related implementation or one country implementation they said all countries objects will be created but why i need all countries objects thousand classes are for 10 countries code but i have one separate server for each country that means for one country 100 classes are sufficient to deploy though during development you have thousand classes that is okay but while running it you should not run all that classes you should have some easy configuration support to cut off remaining 900 in classes i don't want them particularly deployment time if you observe here this is the deployment part how i can cut them how i can activate them or else only 100 classes then there is no solution then i reminded them use profiles then they started adding profiles on each class so that while deployment if we activate a profile it will pick that particular country code only a lot of server burden we reduced with a simple configuration instead of keeping thousand bags weight if you put only hundred bags weight how much you reduced 90 percent of burden we reduced on each server on 10 servers, we reduce that burden. 10 into 90. Whereas, 10 servers having burden of 100-100%. With this concept, we reduced on each server 90% burden. Is it not a good thing? Yes. So, using, using profiles that you can achieve it. And during deployments, we don't we don't move only code directly from development to production. You will be development your development in local. After local, you will be moving it to your development server. There you do your development integration. 
later you will move it to SIT, there tester will do the testing. Then you will send it to UAT, their business people will test it. Then you will move it to production. Then for failover, you will maintain continuity of business servers. So your code not only running in your local machine, going forward, it need to be deployed into five more servers. So do you do always that each server configuration changes in your code and you will deploy? No, you will not have that provision. You should not do that. We will be having a different configurations for each environment. When I deploy my code while running my code in local, I will connect with the local database and test it. Maybe for DevOps, I will connect with local database and test it. Once after it moved to SID, UAT production or COPS, there we will have huge amount of data, real-time value we will have. On real-time data, they will start testing. When they start doing it, to start doing it, they need that particular connections to that particular environment associated to it. So, do we do all that configuration changes manually every time and we deploy? No. There should be some provision. Automatically, it should be able to pick up. I write code one time only, but that code should behave differently in each environment. It should understand which environment is this running in and that environment properties only it should use to connect with that particular environment to database or that particular environment third party softwares. Each environment will have different set of softwares. So the deployment support they have given and to monitor your application, a lot of monitoring support they have given and a lot of developer tools they have given etc 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 so many features they have given in spring boot apart from this apart from this so many other features we have and spring boot nowadays using for 99.9999 percent application nobody doing using spring raw framework old applications are there in spring framework if you fall into any old application, right, mainly banking applications, they don't upgrade applications very quickly. If they have 10 years or 15 years back code, they will continue with that because a lot of business code is there inside the application. They may not dare to change that business logic. So they don't move. But if you, if you fall into such applications, you will be seeing a lot of spring code old generation code but if anybody planning for a new application 100% they will start with Spring Boot only. So these are the real time problems they identified and they started looking into the solution scale. They found some solution scale using Spring Boot. This is how Spring Boot they started imagined and given to us. Okay, first uh, I'll show you this part. Dependency management, I said, easy with the online tool STS. I don't want to go into the coding, but I'll show you the tools. You, you may install them before going to tomorrow's session, right? I would recommend you to install this STS in your machines. Spring Tool Sort. So for Spring Tool Sort, I'll give you the link also. To Spring Tool Sort. So this is the website there you can find it spring.io slash tools 
here you see spring tools for which is for visual studio okay so they given visual studio support eclipse support mostly we java developers are familiar right with eclipse use this one don't dare to use other if you want you can but go with this one okay spring tools for eclipse get this windows version if you are working on any linux machine you want to go with linux if you are if it is for mac download here okay so this is the latest version that you can download id eclipse spring boot projects so i shared the link okay so download it from here okay first link if you click on the first link directly it will download so once you download it you will be getting one jar file i think in the form of jar sts so you will be getting sts cs spring tool sort let me try here yeah, it is getting downloaded let me stop it yeah so you will be seeing a jar file this is executable jar okay so whichever jar you will be getting here this is executable jar that means just if you click on it double click on it it will start installing it will start the installation of your sts once installation is done you will be getting sts in your start here go to your start and search for sts just type spring you will be seeing spring tool suit like your eclipse and you can pin this to your start so it will it will pin here yeah so let me create Five minutes. So let me create a spring boot. Launch it. A beautiful ID. Okay, download it. This is mandatory. Okay, get it. Give a minute. It is loading. Before that, I'll show you this online tool also. Okay, it is loading. Okay. So this is the. STS ID. This is Eclipse version only. Okay. So apart from your default Eclipse properties, they have given additional support here for Spring Boot applications. Just if you go here, generally we create new Java project or dynamic web project, right? Apart from them, one more addition they have given Spring Starter project. If you see here, they given Spring Starter project. So this support they have given here. We can create Spring Starter projects, skeletons, default skeletons, which I was mentioning, right? You are a junior. You don't know how to create skeleton. Don't worry. Start with Spring Starter project. It helps you. You tell Spring Starter what you want. It will create a skeleton for you. That's it. You can start working on it. This is one way. The other way is we have what is that? Spring initializer. 
from spring io project only start dot spring io start dot spring io okay dark window white window use whichever is comfortable so this is also one which helps you to generate this skeleton you may generate project from sts comfortably or else you may generate project from here almost all organizations will allow this they don't block this url they allow it they will be allowing your start.spring.io in your organization so you can access it and you can generate skeleton no worries with it if you don't have access at least you can generate from spring tool suit if you don't have both then you need to create manually so but definitely will be happy okay yeah so yeah that is all tomorrow i'll show you how to create them okay and uh, we'll go through each and every configuration minute thing and we will learn it okay so we need to understand the beauty of a spring boot in real time so that we'll be realizing each factor why they have given okay yeah so we'll start with the first application from tomorrow and we will look into these tools yeah now do you have any questions